Welcome back, you vampires, to another Vrising video. We are going to be going over dev update number 25, which just was posted today, March 7th, 2024. We are a few months, not sure exactly when, but a few months away from the 1.0 update, and we are extremely excited about this, of course. Uh, I just wanted to go through this update real quick. It's not as big and meaty as the last one, but it is very good. I read through every single paragraph here uh, and just to see, you know, make sure I wasn't missing anything. So we're going to talk talk through exactly what's going on here. So this is called Spellcraft Unbound. And initially I was nervous, but now I'm actually really interested to see how this works. So uh, we're talking about many paths to victory. Hunting V-Bloods and V-Rising gives, gives you some flexibility in how you carve your way through Vardoran. You can opt out of defeating certain bosses if their spells or unlocks don't interest you. Hey, if you have watched my channel at all, you know this is very true because I go through a very specific set of bosses. Um, every once in a while, I'll pick up a different boss, but my, my goal is to craft as many possible ways to get through the game without killing bosses. <laughs> I just want to get to the end, right? That's how I play. Um, obviously, I like all the bosses. I enjoy the boss fights, but that's how we play. So it says you can opt them out. You don't have to fight them. Each tier is roughly around the same level of bosses, allows you to tackle them in whatever order you like. You could even strike out and face foes well outside your level range if you're looking for a challenge. Who would do something like that? Hmm, not me, I'm sure. Well, uh, on the other hand, if you want to rain down burning violet fire with Chaos Volley, you have to track down Lydia, the Chaos Archer, and drink her blood. Over the course of your journey through Vardoran, you're pretty much guaranteed to get ex the exact same spells in pretty much the exact same order. This is very true. The opportunity for variety exists, but you often have to go out of your way to get it. Very, very true. The first ultimate ability you unlock is always Merciless Charge from Quincy. There are many spells, well, well let's be honest, there's, of all the ults you could unlock in the Chaos Tree, <laughs> Merciless Charge is for sure probably the best one, but that's beside the point. Uh, many spells you don't get until far later in the game that are very real, that, that very rarely see any use due to only having access to them for a short period of your adventure. This is an extremely good point. There are so many spells at the end of the game that are actually really cool. Um, and I would love to mess around with them more, but like in a speed run, quote unquote, you kind of don't even need to care that they exist. So like Void is extremely good. That's a very, very, very good spell. But I don't really need it. So why would I go out of my way to get it if I don't even have to? I don't even have to kill the boss, you know, the harpy boss to get it. I, it just doesn't, I don't need to do it. So why would I, right? Um, if I'm trying to speed run. So um, that's a, you know, that's a great, great point on that. So let's shake it up and add some deadly spice to your life. A little deviation from your, for you deviants who enjoy multiple playthroughs. Hmm, who's that? I don't know, me? Aha, uh -huh. why, well, good. Flexibility for everyone, including those enjoying their first dive through the challenges of embracing their vampire nature, including spell points. When you slay certain V-Bloods and drain them of their power, in addition to any recipes imparted through their blood knowledge, they give you a fraction of magical energy. So we're going to keep the recipes they drop, which is very good. That would be very confusing if we changed that. Maybe some people will get a little bit of changes, but, you know, that's okay. Who knows? But at least we, you know, we keep those recipes and we get a spell point. So we're going to scroll down here. It says these spell points come in various flavors divided by spell school and then further divided into three tiers. For instance, slaying Clive the Firestarter now rewards the recipe for the alchemy table, the minor explosives box, and one tier one chaos spell point. So now there is a reason to kill him, kind of, if you're trying to get to different tiers. So we're going to scroll down here real quick. This is where it gets very interesting. The spell book, which has been redesigned with these changes, has the spells divided between the three tiers. Each tier represents a tier of complexity rather than strength. I'm not sure exactly if that's true, but we'll see. Um, vampires will be introduced by more complex spells after they've gotten their feet wet. Unlocking the second tier of spells fairly early in their journey journey into Dudley Farmlands with Vince the Frostbringer and Krieg the Undead General. So, we're going to look at this. Uh, let's see here. Actually, let's do this. Let's zoom in on this. Okay, so here is the Chaos Magic Tree. So we know all these spells already, right? 
It looks like you can see this is one. So this is a tier one gem or a tier one spell point, which means, okay, so this is interesting. And these are tier three spell points. So it seems like what this is saying, because they specifically said that Clive is a tier one chaos spell point, not just a, not just a chaos spell point, a tier one chaos spell point, which means you can't go and like grind Clive and get three points and just get void instantly. If that makes sense. It doesn't seem like that's what they're saying because it seems like this is a different tier, tier three, and this is tier one, right? Or tier two. I don't know. This, these are, yeah, this is a bizarre number. If it's, I'm not really sure what this is, or maybe this is how many points you have in order to like unlock something. Like you have three tier two spell points and you can unlock each of these with each of those. Maybe that's what they're saying. I'm not really sure, but, um, so there's a couple things to look at here. So here's obviously here's all our spells. They're saying that power surge is a tier one, which it is very simple. It's very, it's pretty much just blood rage early on. It's very simple to blood rage, um, which is actually really interesting because I've always wondered. So, but whenever they changed and reworked spell, uh, power surge from the original version, which was just so insanely strong before jewels were in the game and spell power surge was crazy good. Just always give you shield movement speed and damage or like physical damage boost just insane um before, whenever they changed that it became kind of meh without jewels but obviously if you add the right jewels to it, it becomes ridiculous again um this is where it gets very interesting that we can get this so it might, um, i don't know if i would ever ever take this i would never take this probably ever because this is terrible for pvp and so it looks like we are back to Chaos Volley, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are back to Chaos Volley. You know, my favorite spell. Okay, but regardless, here's where it's very interesting. Look at this. What is this? What is this little circle? What is that little circle? What is this little circle? Hmm, that's weird. Those are not in the normal spell tree. I guess we're going to have to scroll down and see what they are. So something I would like to point out, whenever you get your first tier or whatever here, it's, these are actually, it's actually really cool that we can pick between these three. Um, Veil of Chaos is obviously insane. I personally don't use it as much as I used to. Or I used to only use Veil of Chaos, like the whole game. But now, um, yeah, now I'm, I'm mostly running Veil of Blood just because the sustain is just so big, especially for a playthrough where you're usually under level and a single hit instead of doing 20 damage is doing like 80 damage. So um, against the boss. So this is, I, I would probably go with something like this. I mean, Chaos Barrier is ridiculous even without jewels it's insane so um yeah this is definitely a really solid so it's cool that we can actually just pick right away and say hey you know what i got a tier two or whatever this is uh spelled spelled point i'm gonna go ahead and throw it into chaos barrier and have that really early because for those who remember we used to get chaos barrier from quincy so that stopped whenever you know angram came in the game but anyway so uh, here's another cool thing. I really like this, that we can see our spell stones. Thank goodness. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm kind of curious here if these are like just mirroring what's on this because this is that saved spell stone. Or if, yeah, this doesn't go to each of these because there's more of these than that. Or if it's just like a slot, you can kind of like hover your spell jewel and be like, okay, cool. Here's the jewel I wanted and then toss it into something. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's it. pretty much everything on this image here. So let's go back. And okay, so we're gonna scroll down here. Uh, okay, this will offer tremendous flexibility in the journey without sacrificing meaning, meaningful progression or overwhelming newer players with too many confusing options. Fair enough. Okay, so for instance, by the time you're making your way into Act Two, where you only at, had merciless—sorry, uh, only had access to merciless charge—you can have access to two or four potential ultimates, including a new one. That we think the necromancers out there are going to are really going to enjoy thank goodness okay so listen not because i'm a necromancer at heart which is really cool don't get me wrong but because this is really sick because this 100 i guarantee you this is an ultimate you get from or a point you get from niklaus i miss fighting niklaus i know most people don't i you, you used to have to fight him to get the study I miss fighting him. I literally, I don't, I think I fought him, I fought him once, maybe, since Gloomrod dropped, maybe one time, which is just insane to think about. I used to fight him every single time I played the game to get the, the study. So, hey boys, we are back. Look at this. 
We are back. We can now kill Niklaus and get ourselves a spell jewel. Now, that's another question I have, by the way. This is a question I have. The spell points, I'm assuming, are a one-time thing. So, for instance, whenever you kill him, you unlock these things. You can't... Yeah, so you can't farm him, actually, now I'm thinking about this. Sorry. I was thinking about it because I heard, I heard spell point, and I was thinking, oh, it's like, it's like a drop. <laughs> and so, it's not a drop, clearly. It's just, just something that you're going to unlock. So, anyway. All right, so we're going to keep going down. Master your magic. This is where it gets sick. So, they shared this image here on Twitter uh like yesterday or a couple days before that and we're now finding out what it is we aren't just changing here let me zoom in here a little bit we aren't just changing how spell progression works there's more to it than that we're also adding new ways to advance your vampire through a new station we're calling the altar of stygian awakening here you'll tap into ancient knowledge to unlock your forgotten potential so look at this thing this looks pretty sick oh yeah look at this we have the vamp vampire marilyn monroe and our boy, the vampire. Don't, just look at this real quick. What's this? That's weird. White armor? Hmm. That's those armor dying coming into play here. We always love that. All right, uncover dark secrets to grab one power. Each spell school has a tier of passive effect that can be unlocked to provide bonuses that modify your gameplay. So we were talking about these little dots. I'm assuming these are passives. Which is actually good. It, it, though I will say, it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Oh, never mind. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, never mind. We're, I'm wrong. Never mind. I was going to say something. I'm wrong. Uh, others provide unique opportunities like spawning blood orbs that you can pick up to recover health or summoning a skeletal warrior after you feed. Being tied to your altar, these effects can be unlocked by gathering materials from the new endgame zone events. New endgame zone events and pooling together with your clan mates to unlock them one at a time in whatever order you like. This means you all share a sort of clan-wide progression. This is sick. Encouraging you to work together towards a common goal that empowers you all and prepares you for the, un up the oncoming challenges of facing the greatest threats to your rise. So it looks like I'm going to be dragging Coda Back into my games, he is going to be forced to farm endlessly in the new in-game zone events so I can get my passives on time. Anyway, so here we go. Passive abilities, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Obviously, there is literally no way. This, so this is blood spray down here, it seems. There's no way to even tell what any of this is. Um, I am, I am curious here, though. It says that we can only unlock our passives through the Altar of Stygian Awakening. So I'm wondering when this comes into play. Like when do, this looks very quote unquote, you know, like like a very advanced technology compared to like the smithy <laughs> or like the workbench, you know, <laughs> like oh, you know, we used to have the blood altar. Now you have the altar of Stygian awakening. This looks pretty insane. So I'm wondering if this is like an end game thing or what because the, you know, this is the tiers. I'm just curious about what these tiers exactly are. So uh I will say just looking at these images I could probably guess what some of them are, like maybe some increased crit or something like that, or maybe if if crit then a lot of stuff. But this Zoom Wolf, we like Zoom Wolf, don't we like Zoom Wolf? We all like Zoom Wolf. Is this increased dash amount? <laughs> I don't know. That would be crazy though. Okay, so we're gonna review this blood spray. Critical strikes. Wait, critical strikes leeches five percent health, like total health. That's pretty nice. And there is a 25% chance to spawn a blood orb when killing a target affected by leech. So this is this is actually crazy, honestly. I mean, obviously there could be way stronger things to this because you can't bank always on crit, but this is really nice for something like rogue where you're going to be critting um, more often than not. You know, or not, not more often than not, but like rogue blood mixed with like crit pendants and there's now crit gear. You know, we know there's like rogue gear. Most likely it's going to have crit stats on it. Um... All of those things together, crits may be a, a more, uh, something more reliable you can bank on. So the idea of getting 5%, if it's current health or ma if it's max health, regardless, 5% health is actually a nice chunk if you're critting. Especially, here is what I'm curious about. Is it, is there a cooldown to this? Like what happens if you throw, if you go like Reaper E Spear Q with crit and you just crit, you know, who knows how many times and it's just like brrrp, instantly full health or obviously pistol Q isn't good against PVP, but against enemies, you could just pistol Q on a, like a boss who's like in a 
wind up animation or something, or maybe they just like miss an animation, you know, they have animation lag and you just pop Q, pistol Q and just like heal like a maniac. So I don't know. Everybody hates moving. So anyway, sorry. So this is super, super exciting. I'm really interested to see what this is. Movement speed, healing on hit, who knows? Okay. Everybody hates moving. So this is pretty sick. This is a completely different thing from the spells that we were talking about earlier. But this is actually really cool. And I'm actually excited to see how this plays out. If it plays out, if it's easy to do or fast to do. So essentially, I'm just going to summarize what this is because I don't want this video to be too long. Essentially, everyone, I've been seeing this since the beginning of the game. People have been asking, hey, is there a way to move our castles? Because like breaking down a castle is the most miserable thing ever. So I, I we just don't, people just don't do it. And so, you know, whenever you see, whenever you've seen me play this game way back in the day, sometimes me and Coda, um, you probably, I don't know if I've ever posted videos of this. What we would do is we would put a starter base. Um, we put a starter base right here. Hide all, we would put like a starter base right here. We would block off the entrance to this and it would have like five walls. So no one could jump in. We would just do everything in tier one that we needed. And then we would run all the way up back whenever there was a cave exit here and we would build a base up here. And this cave exit was from Cursed Forest and we would go like that. But, and then we would just break down. We would do basically make as little effort as we possibly could to make something here that couldn't get stolen, you know, nothing could get stolen from. Um, but we just didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to commit to this because as cool, this it was a good base location uh, for progression, this spot here with the cave that was right here was like insanely good, like ridiculously good for pre-gloom wrap. So, um, so moving was just always a pain. It was a nightmare. And then the, a lot of servers would do one castle um, per clan, one castle heart per clan. So, which personally I agree with, I think that's how it should be always. Um, but uh, yeah, they do one castle heart per clan. Or so in, in those situations, you have to like break your castle down and move it with all of your goods and stuff in your inventory. So if somebody ganked you, it's just game over, which is kind of cool in a way, but also like, no, it's not. It just wipes you completely. That's insane. Um, so there's that. But this, what they're essentially what they're working on, so look, this is like, how am I gonna move all this slime? How am I gonna hold all these limes? Um, great meme. So essentially what they're doing, they're experimenting with this. What they're gonna do, they're gonna have a castle that's built out. And then, so first of all, look at this. They have icon for markets. Yay. I know where they all are, but for new players who have no idea what the heck is even going on, there's not even a prompt for these in the game. Like you don't even know that they exist in the game currently, unless you like stumble upon it. You're like, whoa, what is this? Like, <laughs> it's just weird. Well, you know, it's great to have these. So, um, yeah. So essentially what they're going to do is you have a castle built out. Then you can place a castle heart. So it's going to be a function of your castle heart, it seems. And you can essentially move it over. So look, when you, so here he goes. I'll also explain this. Fairly simple. Place a new structure we've all made that will act as the castle heart in your relocated castle in an unreserved territory. Then interact with it. You can connect that heart to a real castle heart that you have ownership of. When you do so, you get access to a new version of the build menu. Within this build menu, you have access to every individual piece placed in the connected castle and can piece together an entirely new stronghold using the parts you already own. So basically it seems like this is how many of these they have in the other stronghold. So, you know, normally whenever we open the build menu and you have like a bunch of brick, you have some blood essence, it'll say, Hey, you can build this many foundations. Um, what this is doing is what it seems like what it's doing here. It's more saying, Hey, in your other castle, you have this and this. You have 16 forge floors, you have 27 left of this. And so essentially what you're going to do is it's not going to necessarily move the entire castle as is, because that's just completely unreasonable. Like if you have a castle that's right here, how could you fit it into something like this? Right? Like it doesn't make any sense. You have a three story castle that is a big, like crazy M shape or whatever N shape. How could you possibly get into this or like over here or this or like this small one? Right? Well, you can't. But what you could do instead is you can have access to all of your building materials and you essentially pull them over to rebuild your castle without having to break everything down. That is really nice. So <laughs> that's a big deal. But it just say it does say here, 
Just make sure to remember you make space for your prisoners and servants. There are some structures you must place to complete the move, so you won't be able to leave them behind. All right. Castle relocation, relocation structures and items from the linked castle to the new territory. Zero of 166 remaining structures will be recycled and their resources will be deposited around the new castle heart. This is really good. So essentially, essentially once you're done, like you have a gigantic castle in this spot, you don't need that much space for this spot. Once you're done building it, all the remaining mats will be put in, around your castle heart. You can just go pick them up. But just like that, you have relocated entirely from one corner of Ardoran to another. Sorry, to any other. So the idea here, what they said is actually a really good point up here. It essentially says, um, right here. Moving has always been a point, a pain point for players and getting stuck in Farbane and not having the energy to pick up and move your entire castle into a more convenient in-game area has always been a point of agony for vampires ever, everywhere since we first launched V Rising back in March or May 2022. So yeah, initial wave of vampires of any server tends to settle in the first area, Farbane. Yes, 100%. And never and never move on to more convenient plots for their later game content because it's such a such a hassle. So not only is this true in more com like competitive servers or servers with limited castle hearts, um, another thing that happens is players will make, do what we did, me and Coda did, is they'll make a starter base somewhere and maybe this becomes their main base, but what happens is they realize they don't like going here for progression. So like once they're in Cursed Forest, they wouldn't like taking the, you know, they don't like taking the cave all the way over to here, then riding back all the way over to here, or Silverlight Hills from over here and running over. They didn't like doing that. So what they what do you do? You on official servers, every vampire gets castles, like multiple castles. So a squad of four gets four castles. So you'd have one here, you'd have one over here or wherever, and then you'd have one over here, and then you'd have one in Gloomrot. And you just took up four spaces for one clan. And so then like a new person comes in and it's not like players of teams of four are always joining clan servers. Lots of times it's two, it's, it's three, whatever. And like the game has barely started. It's been going for like a day or two and every plot on the entire map is just like taken. So these guys are sitting here in far and like, what, what am I going to get? I guess I'm getting this plot here. And people are just like jumping down into their plot and stealing their stuff and leaving, you know, whatever. Crazy stuff like that. Or, you know, you, you get the idea. Um, and, or they have to ride. I mean, the amount of times, even on like competitive or more, you know, 1x servers or, or like or one Castle Heart servers or two Castle Heart servers, the amount of times that I've spent, like I'll literally come in and just run around all of Farbane, run around all of Dunley, check Silverlight, I don't go into Curse Forest usually at the beginning unless I absolutely have to. And then I'm up in Gloomrot and I'm like, uh, I guess I'm going here, which is a, you know, it's a fine spot, but, or I'm like running around, I'm going like here or here, or I'm just running to every single spot. And finally I find something and it's all because people just didn't feel like moving. So anyway, yeah, very good point. And I'm, it says that they're hopefully trying to get this ready for 1.0. I hope that they can. I don't know how much I'm going to use this. Actually, you know what? I probably would use this if I made a small, um, a small, refined, efficient base. It would actually be easy. Oh, now that I'm thinking about this, this is actually sick. So imagine I start making a base. You know, I'm over here or something. I'm right, you know, say I'm right here. And you guys have seen my rat nest base. I mean, always my bases are just crazy. Usually they're very much of a much a rat nest where I just block off the thing, throw a bunch of stuff on the ground. Um, build walls when needed and when I have the, you know, when I have the floors for them, then we move from there. So it'd be very cool to be able to get that and just like make the rat's nest and then move my progression somewhere else. Like if I'm in in game where I just seem to be like around gloom around all the time, well, I can just move a base over here and boom, slow, throw it down here. And while I throw it down, I already have all my stuff built. I have the mats from the other base. So now I can make a beautiful, efficient base instead of a rat nest, crazy psycho base. But anyway, hopefully this gets put into 1.0. But anyway, that is going to be it for now, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. I am super excited for V Rising 1.0. I cannot wait. I already can tell from the stuff that they have already shown that this is like nothing. <laughs> I can tell because remember what Gloomrot posted? They had plenty of cool things. I was like, wow, oh, this is going to be pretty cool. And then Gloomrot dropped and we got this. And we were like, what? <laughs> like, this is insane. This is a huge addition. 
and so many things happen, right? And so I, yeah, I know for a fact we're getting this and probably this. So we like, this is going to be nuts. I am excited. So anyway, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will catch you in the next one.